إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful speech, the best speech, the best words are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things when you be invented into this religion of us. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything when you be invented into this religion of ours is in innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, قَالَ وَهْبُ إِبْنُ مُنَبِّهِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ أَصَابَ الْخَيْرِ السَّخَاءِ وَالصَّبْرِ عَلَى الْأَذَى وطيب الكلام وهب ابن منبه منبه he was one of the تابعين رحمه الله and he said a very profound statement that there are three things that when they are found in a person they must all be in a person for them to have gained all goodness these three things whoever these are found within then he has attained all goodness generosity patience during harm or trials and good speech. So when we look at this statement, it reaffirms what we've always been reminding ourselves with. And this is from the way of the believers, may Allah make us from them. Because reminding one another benefits the believers. So in this statement, he said, And the last one he mentioned was, طيب الكلام. طيب الكلام. From the ways for you to have complete goodness is that you have good speech. Allah, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٍ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونُوا خَيْرًا مِنْهُمْ وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِنْ نِسَاءٍ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهُنَّ وَلَا وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنْفُسُكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ بِئْسَ بِسْمُ الْفُسُوقَ بَعْدِ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَن لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah says what means oh you who believe Again, these ayat when they begin, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, if you want to be from the believers, you got to be ready to listen, take notes and implement. O you who believe, let not one group of you scoff or ridicule, look down upon another group, it may be that that other group is better than you. And let not one group of women scoff or ridicule or look down upon another group of women, it may be that that other group of women is better than you. And do not defame one another, do not insult one another, do not call one another by nicknames. How bad is it to insult one's brother after having faith? Yani to call your Muslim brother, another believer, faithful believer, inshallah, to call them a sinner or a wicked person. And whosoever does not repent, they are indeed from the Zalimun. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jatanibu kathiran min al-dhani inna ba'du al-dhani ithi wa la tajassasu wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah then in the next ayah, these two ayat are from Surah Al-Hujrat. He says again, O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicion is sinful. 
And do not spy on one another. Do not backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate to eat the flesh of your dead brother. So you should hate backbiting. And fear Allah. Verily Allah is the one who accepts repentance most merciful. Good words. You cannot have qib al-kalam to be of good words to have achieve to help achieve all goodness. If you're backbiting, if you're slandering, if you're insulting, if you're name calling anybody, but especially even your brothers and your sisters in Islam. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal, "Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam qal, 'Man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw liyaskut." Rawahu Ibn Majah wa hadha hadith sahih. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said an authentic hadith. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say what is good or be silent. The good Muslim who wants to gain all goodness, he has to have good akhlaq, good manners, and from good akhlaq and good manners is not just being kind and gentle as last week's khutbah was, but also saying what is good or remaining silent. Getting a hold of that tongue that the Prophet ﷺ, he feared for us, losing control over because it will lead you to destruction. You cannot achieve or attain full goodness if you do not have control over your tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, successful indeed are the believers. And then He lists ayat, He gives us ayat after this, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Describing the characteristics of the mu'minun, of the believers. And that's a khutbah in and of itself. Those ayat. But قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful indeed are the believers. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who when they stand up to pray, they have khushu' they have humility, they are humble, they are obediently standing before their Lord, focusing, putting that dunya that's outside those doors, or outside your home, or outside your prayer spot, behind you, focusing on your prayers. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنَ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ And they are those who turn away from اللَّغْوِ Allah mentioned, successful indeed are the believers. Mention the salah first and foremost, those who have khushu' in the salah. What did he mention next? He mentioned those who stay away from lahu. They stay away, they turn away from it. Any ill speech, any bad speech, lying and backbending, dirty speech, false speech, evil, vain speech or talk, falsehood, all that Allah has forgiven, forbidden. This is from the characteristics of the believers. They turn away from it. But what? They turn away from that lahu. They have good speech. They don't want to get engaged either saying or listening to bad, bad speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another set of ayat, He describes ibad al-Rahman, the characteristics of the, most, or of the slaves of the most merciful. And may Allah make us from those slaves of al-Rahman. وَعِبَادَ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامَ and the slaves of the most merciful are those who walk on the earth with humility, with sedateness, with calmness. You're not afraid of them. They have gentleness and kindness in their walk, in their face, in everything that they do. They're humble, they're humility. They have no arrogance, no pride. But if some foolish people come to them, some ignorant people come to them, and they speak harsh words, they cuss them out, they slur, they, they use... You know, foul language with them. They raise their voices. قَالُوا salama. They do not respond in that way. But yet, they speak back mild words, uh, words of gentleness. Mild words of gentleness. They want peace. They want stability. They ain't looking for problems. This is Ibad al-Rahman. Speaking mild words of gentleness. So, from those three things that are, have to be found in a person for them to attain and achieve and gain all good, leave it kalam, having good speech and good words. The second one that was mentioned was sabru al adha, and to be patient when you're afflicted with harm and afflicted with um, trials and calamities. Notice how these things, my brothers and sisters, they seem to come up in so many different topics that we mentioned on the days of Jum'ah and during Khutb, during our family nights. Why? Because these are the things that you can get a firm handle over, inshallah you'll be successful. Having a good tongue, patience in times of hardship, being generous, being kind, being gentle. These will bring you to goodness. 
Allah says in some amazing ayat at the end of Surah Al-Mu'minun. And listen to them because it's going to show the destination of those who go to Jahannam and those who go to Jannah. And they will be in Jannah as a prelude because of their sabr, because of their patience. Allah said, فَإِذَا نُخِنَ فَإِذَا نُفِخَتِ السُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَنُونَ Allah says what means, so when the horn is blown, no relationship will there be amongst them that day. They will not ask about one another. You won't care where your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your son or your daughter or your spouse or anybody is. That day, it's you concerned with you. You're concerned with your reckoning, the one that's about to happen with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينَهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And those whose scales are heavy with good deeds, they are going to be the ones who are successful. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينَهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسْرُوا أَنفُسُهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ الْخَالِدُونَ But those whose scales are light, they didn't do good deeds, their scales will be light. They are the ones who have lost their souls, being in Jahannam, abiding eternally. تَلْفَحُ وَجُوهُهُمُ النَّارِ وَهُمْ فِيهَا كَالِحُونَ the fire will sear their faces. Just like a hot plate sears a steak in seconds and burns or crusts the edges of it. Or the top of it. And they therein will have taut smiles. أَلَمْ تُكُنْ آيَاتِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَكُنْتُمْ بِهَا تُكَذِّبُونَ It will be said, were not my verses recited to you? Were not my proofs given to you? Did you not hear the ayat that I revealed my own words, my own speech that was sent to all of humanity? Did you not hear my warnings? Did you not hear how I tried to guide you? Were not my verses recited to you, yet you used to deny them. You used to look away. Why? Because they weren't in align with your desires. Because you yourself, you wanted to do something else with your dunya life. So there will be questions with this. Were not my verses recited to you, telling you this is halal, this is haram. Were not my verses recited to you, saying, abandon these desires so that you may be successful. Know that there's a day where you will be reckoned and judged and your deeds will be weighed on scales. And you used to deny them. قَالُوا رَبَّنَا غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْنَا شِقْوَتَنَا وَكُنَّا قَوْمًا ضَالِينَ They will say, our Lord, our wretchedness, our unhappiness, our miseryness, our distress, it overcame us. And we were a people astray. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ Our Lord, remove us from it. And if we were to return to evil, we would indeed be of the wrongdoers. قَالَ أَخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ Allah will say to them, remain despised as you are. Remain in this state and do not speak to me. A day where we can look forward to speaking to our Lord and Him forgiving us because we were people of Tawheed, we were people who had affirmed the oneness of Allah with respect to His worship and His Lordship and His names and His attributes. Yet He will say to this group, do not speak to me. And He will not speak to them. إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِنْ عِبَادِي يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّحِمِينَ So Allah will say to this people, to these people who were in Jahannam because of their choices and turning away from His ayat, He will say to them, Indeed, there was a party of My servants, there was ibad from My servants, slaves of Mine, in this dunya, human like you, free will, they could have followed their desires, they could have followed their whims, they could have followed their lusts, but they chose to obey me as much as they could, and stick to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, as much as they could. There was a party of my servants who said, Our Lord, we have believed, so forgive us for our sins, have mercy on us for what we did to transgress your limits, and you are the best of the merciful ones. Allah will tell them there's this group of people, فَاتَّخَذْتُمُوهُمْ سِخْرِيًّا حَتَّى أَنْسَوْكُمْ ذِكْرِي وَكُنْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ تَضْحَكُونَ But you took those people, the ones who used to go and pray in the masajid, the ones who would stop what they're doing to make their salah, the ones who would give in charity, the ones who would fast Ramadan even when it's a hundred and something degrees outside, and they'd stay away from drinking water. You took them as a mockery, and that made you forget my remembrance. And because of that, you used to laugh at them. You used to mock them and ridicule them. Look at these guys fasting in this weather. Look at these people. We're in the middle of a great game and they're going to pray Salah. Going to the masjid instead of praying in their home when it's cold or when it's really hot. These things, you find these people mocking the people who follow the Quran and the Sunnah. 
Yet what will be told to them? You used to laugh and mock at them, but they are the ones who are successful now. إِنِّي جَزَيْتُهُمْ الْيَوْمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا أَنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Indeed, I have rewarded them this day because they patiently endured in this dunya. They patiently endured. When I tested them, they were patient. When I tried them, they were patient. When I gave them a calamity, they were patient. When harm came to them, they were patient. And so this brings them their success. That they are the attainers of true success. This is true. This is the true fa'is. The one who has succeeded. It's not the one with the degrees on the walls or the biggest bank account or the nicest home or the largest family. It's the one who gets into Jannah. And that will come the sabr al adha It will come with patience on those times of harm and calamities. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ <clears> صَبَرُوا <throat> Allah says what means, and those who are patient, seeking the face of their Lord. You're patient, not because you're trying to show up. You're patient because you know Allah is witnessing you. And that what is happening to you has come from Khairul Makaleen, the best of planners, the best decision maker. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're patient with this. Seeking Allah's pleasure, seeking Allah's rahmah, His aid, His guidance, His, His mercy. So you seek that, and you establish the prayer, and you spend for what we, yani Allah has provided for them, secretly and publicly. Both ways of giving in sadaqah, they're good and they're acknowledged by Allah, the secret and the private. And those who prevent evil with good, those will have a good consequence in the final home, yani with Jannah. There are good consequences for their patience with what Allah decreed, with establishing the prayer and giving in charity and enjoying the good and forbidding the evil will be the reward of Jannah. Luqman, he said to his son, Ya Bunayya, O my son, aqim salah establish the prayer, not just do it. Anyone can stand, bow, bend, make sajda, whatever. Establish the prayer means in its time with some humility, with some khashur, not caring for that dunya, rather caring for your relationship with your Lord. Establish the prayer, he told his son. أَقِمْ الصَّلَاةِ أَقِمْ الصَّلَاةِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَنْحَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكْ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأَمُورِ Look man, he told his son, oh my son, establish the prayer, enjoying the ma'roof, enjoying what is good. First and foremost, tawheed, that Allah is one. And he should only be worshipped alone without any partners. No dua to the Prophet or to anybody else. Only dua to Allah. All worship is for Allah alone without partners. Establish this tawheed. Enjoin it and enjoy everything that is good. Forbid what is evil, shirk, kufr, and everything that is evil and bad. And bear patience with whatever befalls you. He told his son to bear patience with whatever befalls you. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Allah tells us in the Quran, help yourself with patience and prayer. Look at how many times salah and patience are mentioned together. It's not an irony, it's reality. Allah has the wisdom, He has the hikmah. He said that to us because it will be your source of comfort and peace. And a way for you to gain that patience. Bear patience, with patience, whatever befalls you. Verily, these are some of the important commandments ordered by Allah with no exemption. Establish the prayer. Give in charity. Enjoy the good, forbid the evil, and be patient with what Allah has decreed for you. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma yusibu al-Muslim min nasabin wala wala wasabin, wala hammin wala hazanin, wala adan wala ghammin, hatta al-shawka yushakuha, illa kafar Allahu biha min khatayahu. Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated this hadith in an adab al-Mufrad for Imam al-Bukhari, where the Prophet sallam, he said, a Muslim does not encounter any fatigue. All the times you're tired for doing something for the sake of Allah, whether it's for your family, for the sake of Allah, for your brothers and sisters of Islam, for the sake of Allah, for the ummah, for the sake of Allah. Anytime you encounter fatigue or tiredness, concern, sorrow, sadness, anxiety, depression, anything of these sorts, grief, Injury, even a thorn that pricks you. Because you go to cut a rose or you go to pick a lemon or whatever it may be. 
All of this will happen, except that Allah will expire errors from him just for that. Any hardship you go through, any distress or sorrow, anxiety, sadness, physical or mental or psychological, this is the way that Allah is cleansing you of sins. So be patient so Allah may reward you. أَقُولُ قَالِي هَذَا وَصَفْرَ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ إِذَا اللَّهِ يَخْرَ لَهُمْ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَخِرُهُ وَنَسْتَهْدِيهُ وَنَسْتَهْدِيهُ وَنَسْلِمُ عَنَ الْمِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمَ تَسْلِيمًا كَثِيرًا وَبَعَدْ Brothers, if you can move forward so that those who come in can pray two rak'as and sit down, barakallahu feekum. Wahab ibn Munabbih, one of the tabi'een, rahimahullah, he mentioned, he said, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ أَصَابَ الْخَيْرِ Three things, if a person has attained them all, they have attained all goodness. طِيبَ kalam, having good speech. Being someone who speaks well and speaks good and kind and gentle, even when the foolish come to you. وَالصَّبْرَ عَلَى الْأَذَى And the person who is patient when they are given harm or calamity or trials or afflictions. And the last one we'll mention, السَّخَرْ Generosity. Generosity. So generosity, patience when harmed, good speech, you can attain all goodness by having a firm handhold on these three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ وَأَسْمَعُوا وَأَطِيعُوا وَأَنْفِقُوا خَيْرًا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَمَنْ يُقَى شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah says what means, so observe taqwa, have total obedience of Allah, keep your duty to Allah. Obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم, in a way that you put between Allah's punishment and you a barrier. Be cautious with your speech and your actions. As much as you can, observe taqwa to the limit you can. And listen and obey and spend in the way of Allah, it being good for you. And those who have been saved from their greed of their hearts, these are the ones who will be successful. Because mankind was in t- they're inclined towards greed, towards having more and more and never being satisfied. ليس عليك هداهم ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء وما تنفق من خير فلأنفسكم وما تنفقون بت إلا بتغاء وجه الله وما تنفق من خير يوفى إليكم وأنتم لا تظلمون Allah says what means not upon you Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is their guidance but Allah guides whom He wills whatever you spend in good it is for yourselves when you spend it only seeking the face of Allah and the pleasure of Allah and the reward from Allah And whatever you spend in good, it will be repaid to you in full. And you will not be wronged. Abdullah ibn Zubair, radiallahu anhu, he said, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَمْرَأَتَيْنِ أَجْوَدَ مِنْ عَائِشَ وَأَسْمَاء وَجُودُهُمَا مُخْتَلِفْ أَمَّا عَائِشَ فَكَانَتْ تَجْمَعُ الشَّيْءِ إِلَى الشَّيْءِ حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ اجْتَمَعَ عِنْدَهَا قَسَمَتْ وَأَمَّا أَسْمَاء فَكَانَتْ لَا تُمْسِكْ شَيْئًا لِغَدٍ This hadith which is also mentioned in Imam al-Bukhari's Al-Adam al-Mufrad and Shaykh al-Adami who authenticated it. Abdullah ibn Zubair, he said, I've never seen two women more generous than Aisha al-Asma, رضي الله عنهما. May Allah be pleased with both of them. Their generosity was different. As for Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. She used to gather things and gather things and gather things until she collected as much as she could and collected it all together, and then she would give it all away. We're gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering with no plan of giving anything away. And Asma, radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, she would not keep anything for the next day. If she had it with her, she gave it away. This is how generous the first generation was. The companions, they understood that value of being generous. Abdullah ibn Umar, he was in the market one day buying food, but he had to borrow some money to buy food for his camel. But people had noticed that the day before, he had like 4,000 dirham with him. And he had a blanket. And it came to be that he had that 4,000 dirham that day before, and he gave it all away in charity to the poor. So what remained with him was his blanket. But on his way to his home, he saw someone who was needy and in need of it, and he gave that person his blanket too. 
radiallahu anhu, this was the generosity of the best of generations, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu wa radahum. After the Prophet wasallam died, there was great hardship, and people would go seeking help and assistance from Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But the Bayt al-Mal, the, the treasury was empty, they had no money in it. Just at that time, Uthman radiallahu anhu was coming from Damascus on a caravan. And he had with him goods upon goods upon goods upon goods. So the people who were merchants, they came wanting to buy it from Uthman. We'll give you this much for it. We'll give you this much for it. We'll give you this much for it. And they kept increasing and he would refuse to sell it to them. And they said, why will you not sell it to us? He said, because I know someone who's going to give me 700 times what it's worth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all he came with from Damascus, he gave it away in charity. This was the generosity of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, another opportunity, a pope comes in front of us to show our generosity. And all of these things, we may think it's benefiting the other, but it's benefiting you. When you give in the way of Allah, it benefits you, and your family, and your offspring, for many generations to come. The Lodi Cemetery, may Allah reward the brothers who began it, and who maintain it, and meet often to maintain it, they have that one piece of land. Then they purchased the second land, and now there's a third land adjacent to them that came available that we need to purchase. And the price was agreed upon. It was $800,000. There's only $150,000 left to pay off that land. A local burial is $3,000. If you live in the county, it's $3,000. If you knew what the kuffar prayed to bury their dead, you would go crazy. If you even want to go to the closest Muslim cemetery over the hill to Livermore, it's $6,400 or something like that to bury. This is $3,000 if you live in this county that you get to be buried in Lodi for that amount. Lessen the burden on the deceased and their family. So look at all of this. Many of us have loved ones there that are buried there or we've been there at some point to witness loved ones, family or non-family, to be buried there. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this cemetery is a big ni'mah, it's a big blessing from Allah. Because part of us living here is not just to blend in and then just get buried with the non-Muslims in their cemeteries. But to be buried in a Muslim cemetery, with those upon Tawheed, those upon worshipping Allah alone without partners. So this is part of what we have to do as living here, is establishing a Muslim cemetery. Alhamdulillah, which has already been done and now we're preparing for decades and decades, maybe generations to come. If you went there last year, you thought, okay, maybe they're going to fill a few more spots. And now you find rows that have been buried there from our brothers and sisters. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَاءَ Every soul is going to taste death. We got to have the stability, not just the masajid, not just the schools, but we need to have those cemeteries so we can be buried as Muslims, amongst Muslims, in the cemetery of Muslims. So today, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to at least come up with $50,000. The credit card machines will be available on your way out. Everything in the donation boxes is going to the cemetery. Online, you can go through Sunday night, 11.59 p.m. Everything that comes in, every penny, will be given to the cemetery as a contribution from the Islamic Center of Manteca and our community towards obtaining that other piece of land. All these donations are tax deductible, okay? And you can go through the website, or better yet, before you delay and forget, tap it on the way out, inshallah, and give in the way of Allah. Again, <clears throat> you can get a receipt and a tax donation write off for this, but we need to help achieve this amount very soon. I think they close this month and they have to have all the funds in place. So after the salah, we'll do a mild fundraiser. And we know this community likes to give in, in, in secret many of the times, but please donate on your way out. Do not delay. Let's help achieve at least this fifty thousand dollar goal from this one hundred and fifty thousand dollar left. اللهم صل على المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع
مجيب قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عادات وعداء الدين يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أم يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين